Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is... Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But the fruit of the Spirit is... Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All right, on the count of three, I want to see your crazy face. Ready? One, two, three. Let me see it. Ooh, y'all got some crazy faces out there. How's everybody doing today? Oh, yeah. Well, I am super pumped up and excited to continue our series called what? Giant. Giant. That's right. Today, we are talking about something that's very very important. Does anybody know what a critic is? Do you guys know what a critic is? You're all like, no, I don't know what a critic is. Well, a critic is somebody that comes and tells you that you are doing something the wrong way. Everybody say, oh no. Yeah, a critic is someone who comes and says, hey, you're doing that wrong. You're you're supposed to be doing it this way. And they can even come and tell you that you're doing something wrong for something that God has planned for you and something God has planned big for you to do. See, who have we been learning all about? We've been learning about Goliath and who else in this story? David. David faced some incredible critics. See, he was just a young little shepherd boy, but he still had critics too. And for us, Critics are everywhere. It is not hard for us to find critics in our life. But before we talk too much more about what we're learning about today, I want to kick it to Tim and Michelle and check out this week's video on Giant. Hey everybody, my name's Timothy. And I'm Michelle. And we're here to continue this series called Giant. In this series, we've been learning some big lessons from the story David and Goliath. We've already met the two main players of this epic battle. Goliath, the nine foot tall Philistine giant, and David, the small shepherd boy. David saw that Goliath was threatening the entire army of Israel. He decided that he was gonna do something about it. He was gonna take on this giant. Can you believe that? A small shepherd boy taking on this giant all on his own? It doesn't seem very fair to me. It seems like you would need some superhuman strength or something. Thanks. You might remember a friend we introduced to you who had a bit of a bully problem. Evan decided that he was going to confront the school bully named Rusty. Well, when Evan decided to share his plan with his friends, They did not think it was a good idea. People might tell you the same type of things. They think that you're not strong enough, smart enough, big enough, whatever. They think that you don't have what it takes to take on your giant. There's a name for people like that. Crickets. No, not crickets. Critics. Oh yeah, I knew that. Critics. All they do is criticize and criticize. But you can't listen to them. You have to listen to God. And God says, that you can take on the giant problems in your life, not in your own power, in God's power. So don't listen to those critics out there, listen to God. In today's lesson, you'll learn how David didn't let his crickets keep him from taking on his giant. You said crickets again, it's critics. Whatever, stop cricketizing me. It's criticizing, not crit, Never mind. So until next time, I'm Michelle. And I'm Timothy, and we'll see you next time on Giant. Give it up for Tim and Michelle, everybody. You see, even David had critics. People that were telling him all these negative things about what he was doing wrong. And what we can't do in our lives is we can't listen to the negative opinions of critics in our life. Instead, who should we be listening to? God, we should be listening to God. And we're going to be learning all about that in our lesson today. But it is now time for us to find out what's up.
What's up, peeps? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E S, Skittles in the Hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how to deal with critics. So every time somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. I won't let critics destroy my faith. Sometimes people can be super mean. They criticize you and criticize you year week. You're nobody. Your breath smells like day old pizza. They tell you all kinds of stuff that's rude and mean. But you gotta learn to tune them out. Don't listen to the critics, listen to God. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I won't let critics destroy my faith. And that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby. Oh uh, yeah, so now that we've learned what's up, Miss Sharon, we, we got to be ready at any point in the service, because you never know. Skittles in his big afro head. Is oh, here he is. <laughs> what's up? I won't <laughs> let critics destroy, destroy my me. faith. Destroy, destroy me. It's destroy my faith, my Miss Sharon. You got to learn this, too. Wrong. The kids know it better than you do. Yeah. I can't believe it. But you got to be ready because you never know at any point. Skittles and his big afro head itself could pop up on the screen. And when he does. Oh, here we go. What's up? I won't <laughs> let critics destroy my faith. Good job, Miss Sharon. You did it. You did it. But I think we can be louder. Yeah, I think, I think the see. kids at home can be louder. I think the yeah. kids in this room can be louder. I think we can all be louder. So whenever Skittles pops up, you got to be as loud as you possibly can because you never know. It can happen at any moment. We could be doing absolutely anything. We could be doing... Oh, here we go. What's up? I won't let critics destroy my faith. And that right there, Miss Sharon, That's is what's, what's up. up. That is. All right, you know what else? It's now time for our offering. I need a boy and a girl bucketeer who would like to help out. Who would like to help out? You, come on, Ms. Emma. Come on, Eric, I grab you too while y'all are here. Now, can I get somebody to pray for us? Let's see, who can I get to pray for us? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, she's smiling so big. Here we go. All right, everybody, bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Lord, I pray for this offering and pray for us to have a great day tomorrow and the rest of the day today. Amen. Amen. Great job. All right. First row, come on down. If you have real money, come on and give your offering. And anybody else? Second row. Anybody else left to give? Is that everybody? All right, guys. You know what? We are going to take this and have it counted. And the team who gives the most We'll get two power bucks, and the second place team will get one power buck because we are all winners when we give to God. Y'all right, guys? Oh, hey, hey. Whoa, What's here we up? go. I, I won't, won't let critics destroy my faith. Oh, yeah. Miss Sharon, do you know what time it is? I think I do. This is the part. I love this part because this is where all the fun happens. This is right where here. it goes down it's right here. This is where it goes down right This is here. where it happens because right now, it's time <laughs> to play a game. Who wants to play a game? All right, you find three girls. I'm going to find three boys, all right? Who wants three to play girls. this game? One, three girls. Let's see. two, three over here. Woo! Three. Come on, I got my boys. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Come on, girls. All, All right. right, girls, boys. The name of this game is called Blind Monkeys. All right, and here are the rules. The rule is that Pastor Tim is giving everyone a blindfold. You have to put those on. And what we're going to do is that we're going to lay bananas on the floor. You're going to have to crawl over this way somewhere. And find a banana. Ooh, the first banana. one on either team to find a banana with your blindfold on. Peel 
the banana and eat it, it's the winner. Nobody's Ooh. allergic to bananas, are they? Anybody allergic to bananas? You're allergic you to bananas? You can't eat bananas. That's bananas. All right. All right. We need oh, another what? player. So you're not allergic to bananas? All right, okay, good. he can All right, we'll explain it. Okay, everybody can have a banana. Eat a banana, right? Nobody? All, All right. right. We're not going to have anybody get sick on us. Okay. Okay, so put your blindfolds on. You're going to have to get down on your knees, and we're going to guide you so you won't crawl off the stage, okay? You're going to have to crawl around and find a banana. Oh, yeah. The first person to find a banana and peel it and eat it. You have to keep the blindfold on. All right, girls, y'all got to get down. Put your, put your blindfold on. All right. All right. On your mark. Here we go. Pastor Tim, are we ready? I'm ready. Are you Boys ready? And girls, are y'all ready? All right. Oh, Here yeah. They're ready. Here we go. Ready, set, go. You got to crawl around and find a banana. Don't eat his shoe. That's not a banana. You have to find a banana. Oh, some of you are getting it. closer than others. Oh, some of y'all are closer than Oh, we got one. Oh, somebody's one. got a banana already. Oh. Oh, oh, oh you, some of you are going the wrong way. The bananas yeah, are the other way. Oh, oh, All we've right. got three people with bananas now. Gotta some oh. others are just lost oh, as ever. Me. Like a blind monkey over here. Oh, okay, one's opening her banana. All He's right, almost go. halfway Keep done. Keep going. Oh, oh, you're so close. Going. You're going the wrong way. Keep going. Oh, man. Keep Graham, going. you better eat that banana faster. Keep going. Uh, Kinsley's taking Keep her time going. getting this thing peeled. Man, it's like she hurting. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like she Is that hurting. good, man? All right, Is that a good banana? Oh, right. you girls are just I'm, lost I'm as ever. Hey, let me help you out. Go that way. Go that way. Go straight. There we go. You'll have better luck going in that direction. Although, there's a person there. there Careful. Oh, right. there's only one without a banana. banana. I think it's going to be between Graham and Ian, but I'm not sure. You don't have to eat the peel, though. Don't worry. Oh, my goodness. Ian eats his more like a monkey than Graham does. Graham's using his hands. Oh, we have a winner, Miss Sharon. Way to go, Ian. The boys are the winners. Wow. Whoa. Okay, this banana didn't even get found. How sad. <laughs> We're going to put that back in the bucket. All right, here we go. All right, guys. Oh, wow. Okay, let's bring all of your banana trash over here to the trash can. Let me have your mouth. Oh, yeah, let's have your blindfold back, though. All right. Oh. That was awesome. Wow. Thank you. Follow Pastor Tim. Oh, <laughs> what's up? I won't let critics destroy me. All right, guys. Woo! That was awesome. Yodelay, yodelay, yodelay. Hee-hoo! Yodelay, yodelay, yodelay. Hee-hoo! Hi there, Maple. What's up? What's up? Well, no one's ever asked me that before. Huh? What do you mean? Well, lots of things are up. Like birds, clouds, the ceiling. Um, <laughs> Very funny. Well, mountains are up, the sky. Oh, and airplanes. Oh, and trees. Don't forget about trees. Okay, Maple, we get it. Balloons, helicopters, rainbows, bubbles. Oh, and corn dogs if you throw them high enough. Wow, there are literally hundreds of things that can be up. What a thought provoking question. Maple, what's up is just another way of saying, how are you doing? Oh, well, why didn't you just say that? You city folk are mighty strange. But to answer your question, I'm not doing too good. Not too good at all. Oh, what's wrong? Squirrels. <laughs> oh, dear. You're always talking about how you hate. I just hate squirrels. <laughs> What is so bad about squirrels? Well, squirrels are just a bunch of good-for-nothing, no-good, bushy-tailed, buck-teeth tree rats. There ain't nothing good that comes out of squirrels. Let me ask you something. You ever heard of a rescue squirrel or a squirrel doctor or a squirrel lawyer? Uh, no, I haven't. Nobody! 
everybody has because squirrels are no good. Let me tell you something. Squirrels are keeping me from doing my work. I can't work. You see, I got this tree I'm supposed to cut down. But I can't focus on cutting down the tree because the squirrels keep laughing at me. Uh, the squirrels are laughing at you? Yes. All they're doing is laughing at me and making fun of my axe swinging technique, saying I ain't good enough. Well, let me tell you something. I ain't going to let those squirrels criticize me. Don't let critics discourage you either. That's actually a good point, Maple. You know, you can't stay focused on other people's negativity. You've got to fight the giant, not the critics. Amen to that. You know what? I ain't scared of no squirrel. Squirrels can cheater chatter all they want to about how I'm not good enough. But guess what? I can rise above it. You know what? I told you one time that I arm wrestled a bobcat over a brick of cheese. Guess what else I did? I tricked a gopher into being my backpack. <laughs> and you know what? I think God is using all of these small battles to help me win a big victory. And he can do the same thing for all of you. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that God wants the boys and girls to arm wrestle bobcats or even wear gophers as backpacks. But it is true that God can use, can, can use our giants to help us with the smaller victories. And the boys and girls are going to learn all about that today. Well, sadly, I ain't got the time to stay and listen to the lesson, but I got to go sharpen my ax. These squirrels are toast. You ever had squirrel toast? It's delicious. Yeah. Well, this is Maple Sawback. I'll see you later, boys and girls. But don't forget, don't try to lasso a rattlesnake because the rope's not got nothing to hold on to. I'll see you later. Go away, away. Wow. Squirrel toast. That sounds real gross. Oh, my oh. goodness. Oh, here we go. What's up? I won't let critics destroy my faith. That's right. We can't let critics destroy our faith. Now, I want everyone to pay very, very close attention because right now we are going to learn today's Bible story. Today, we are continuing to learn about the story of David and Goliath. And I want to catch you all up on where we are in this story so far. See, Goliath was a nine-foot-tall, giant Philistine soldier, and he wanted someone in the Israel army to come and battle him. And the winner of this battle would determine whether or not the Israelites would become slaves to the Philistines. No pressure, right? Well, everyone who heard Goliath threatening was scared to death. The whole army of Israel, they were shaking in their boots. They were afraid, except for David. David was a young shepherd boy who had come to visit the, his brothers in the army. And he, he heard what Goliath was saying and was furious that someone would say that about the army of Israel and about their God and David said, I will fight this giant. As soon as David spoke those words, his brothers began to make fun of him. They said, what do you know about fighting? You're just a little shepherd boy. You can't do that. Well, if that wasn't enough, David was called to the tent of King Saul. And King Saul asked David what he was planning to do. And David said, well, don't worry about a thing. I'll go fight this Philistine. King Saul looked at David, and he said, don't be ridiculous. I mean, there is no way you can go against this giant Philistine. You're only a boy, and he's been fighting in the army since he was a boy. Well, David's brothers and King Saul, they were both very convinced that David just didn't have what it took to beat this giant. They were critics who really thought there was no way David could win. David spoke up to the king and said, I have been taking care of my father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and take the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turned on me, I caught it by the jaw and clubbed it to death. Wow. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this Philistine too. 
The Lord who saved me from the claws of the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. That's pretty awesome. See, David, he had a lot of confidence in God helping him through this battle. In spite of his brothers and King Saul, who were just criticizing him and telling him there was no way he could do it, David knew that God had other plans. See, in your lesson today, you're going to learn all about how you can do the same thing as David. You don't have to listen to the critics, but instead, you can do what God wants you to do. Now, it's time for... Oh, oh. <laughs> I think... So. Oh, here we go. I won't let critics destroy my faith. Good job, good job. I had a feeling Skittles was about to pop up. Well, right now, it's time to check in with Tiny Tanya and find out today's power verse. Watch. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya. But most people call me Tiny Tanya because I'm pretty tiny. Okay, I'm really tiny. Most of the things that are normal size to other people are ginormous to me. Well, I've got a huge list of things to get from the warehouse I work at and ship to the customers of Bamazon.com. But before I do, I'm going to teach you today's power verse. Today's power verse says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9. That power verse is massively awesome. Now I want all the boys to stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9. Tremendous job, boys. Now it's time for the girls to stand up and say the power verse with me, Tiny Tanya, on the count of three. One, two, three. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9. Good job, girls. You can sit back down. Today's power verse is so great. Now I have to ship this giant sock monkey to a man named Max Imum. But today, all of the people at work were being really critical of me. They were saying I wasn't doing a good job shipping all these giant things. But I'm not going to let them discourage me, and I won't let them stop me from doing good. I know that God will reward my hard work. So now it's time for all of you guys to stand up to your feet and say the power verse with me on the count of three. One, two, three. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9. That was great, but I better get going because if these items don't get shipped, the customers won't get their purchases in time. I better scram. I mean, bam! <laughs> I'll see you later, boys and girls. This is Tiny Tanya. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, give it up for Tiny Tanya. And now I want you to all stand up to your feet because it's time for us to enter into our time of worship. So I want you to put away anything that might distract you, any toys, anything, and just spend this time focusing on God.
worship you today. Lord, thank you so much that you are forever. Lord, everything you do, everything for us, Lord, you will always be there. You will always be the same. So today we lift you high. We worship you, Lord. And we pray that you help us to listen and learn to what you have for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. And I want you to get into something we call our LLP, or our listen and learn position, where you're sitting up straight, your hands in your lap, your feet on the floor, or at least angling down there towards the floor, your eyes open, boop, and looking right up here at me, your ears open and listening to me, and your mouths are closed. In anything you have, whether it be your shirt or toys or anything that might be a distraction to you, I want you to put it down beside you so that you're not a distraction for you or anybody around you. All right? Today, we are talking all about critics. No, and- no, no, mister. I'm sorry. You are doing this all wrong. I- you cannot talk to these kids about God while you are dressed like this. Whoa, I what's mean, wrong with on. this? You're wearing jeans? A t-shirt, tennis shoes, you're supposed to be wearing a suit and tie looking your best. But that doesn't that matter. That is not your best. That is not okay. This is not allowed. You cannot do it like this. Because of my clothes, I can't teach you ge- about Not just Jesus that. Your microphone is on the wrong side of your face. See, it's supposed to be on this side. And you're way too loud. But that, that doesn't make any sense. You're also really boring. You're just what? doing a really bad job right now. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. No. I'm the one messing it up. No. Oh, all right. Stop, stop, stop. One second. Okay, have you ever had somebody like this in your life? Now, I asked Miss Ashton to do this, but they come up and they say, hey, you're doing everything wrong. You're not wearing the right clothes. You're not talking right. Have you ever had somebody like that in your life? Yeah. Go have a seat, Miss Ashton. Thank you very much. You don't have to clap for her. She was being mean to me. So mean. No, but that's what a critic is. They come into your life and they tell you all these bad things, these mean things, these negative things about what you're doing, how you act, the things you do, and things that you might even be called to do by God. See, I'm up here and I'm about to teach you guys about critics. And Miss Ashton came up and she was telling me that I'm not good enough, that I can't do this. I can't stand up in front of you kids and tell you about Jesus and because I'm not wearing the right clothes, or because my mic is on the wrong side of my face, or because I'm too loud, or because I'm boring. But does any of that stuff mean that I can't teach you about God? No, not at all. And David faced the exact same situation. David had decided he was going to go and fight Goliath. But what did everybody around him tell him? It said, you can't do that. And I'm sure he's sitting there hearing him say, you're too small, you're not a part of the army, you were just delivering us food. I mean, the armor doesn't even fit you, the sword is too big. There's no way you can do this, David. You can't do this. But David knew that he could. And there are some amazing lessons that we can learn from David about how he responded to people that started to criticize him. Number one, everybody say, number one, don't let critics discourage you. Even though it probably hurt his feelings, David didn't let the fact that his brothers or Saul, that none of them believed in him. And he didn't let that stop the fact that he was going to fight the giant Goliath. He knew that God was with him, so he did not become discouraged. And when others begin to make fun of you or talk bad about you or tell tell you that you aren't good enough, that you can't do that, don't let that discourage you. Don't let that get you down. Remember, it's not your critics who have to believe in you, but who has to believe in you? It's God. It's God who has to believe in you. And we already know that he does big time. So don't get discouraged and don't give up. Number two, fight the giant, not the critics. Fight the giant, not the critics. It would have been easy 
for David to start a fight with his brothers. I mean, I can just imagine it. David's like, no, well, you're too big to fight Goliath. And then they're going back and say, well, you're too tiny and you're just a little shepherd boy. And he's like, well, you're dumb. Yeah. I can imagine that he would just start this huge argument with them. But did he do that? No, he didn't. He could have been so easily offended, but he didn't. He didn't start fighting with him. He didn't argue with him. He didn't do any of that. Why? Because he knew that God still wanted him to defeat the giant. So he remained focused on defeating the giant and didn't let the critics become his enemy. And from that, we can learn the final lesson. The small battles prepare you for big victories. David told King Saul about how he had taken, out, taken on lions and bears who, who had come to attack and try to destroy his dad's sheep. He said, the Lord who saved me from the claws of the lion and the bear will save me from this Philistine. He understood that God was preparing him all along to face this giant, to face Goliath. Kids, you face problems every single day in your life. You face temptations, you face difficulties, you face troubles. They may not seem very big. They may not seem very important. But when you trust God to help you in those small battles, in those small things, then it's a whole lot easier to trust God to win your victory over the giant. See, you never know when your giant may show up. So you have to trust God in every single moment so that when that giant comes, you can be prepared to defeat it. I want you guys to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I know this is tough as kids. We talked about it a few weeks ago, last week, how we're not too young to do big things for God. God can use little me to do big, amazing things. But that doesn't mean that critics won't come. And people won't tell you you're doing things wrong or you're not doing it right or, or be mean to you. They're still going to come. But God believes in you. So today, if you're struggling with people that are telling you you're not good enough, if you're struggling with people who are criticizing you and telling you negative things and being mean to you, if that's you and you have people like that in your life, I just want you to raise your hand. Whether you're at home or in this room, I want you to raise your hand. People may not believe in you, but God does. God believes in you and knows that he is going to use you to overcome some amazing giants. Lord, you see these boys and girls that raise their hands. Lord, I pray that, first off, you will help them to overcome the critics they're facing. The people that are, are telling them they're too young, that they're not good enough, they're not doing things right, Lord. I pray that you won't let them get discouraged. God, I pray that you would give them an overwhelming sense of peace, just like you did for David. David was not affected by his critics. And so I pray that these kids would not be affected by their critics. Lord, I pray that in the small battles, you would continue to prepare these boys and girls for the giants that they're going to face, Lord. All along the way, that you would prepare them. God, I pray that you would get rid of some critics in their life. Lord, that their critics would become encouragers instead of people that tear them down and would become people that lift them up. Most of all, God, I just pray that you would help them not to get discouraged and know that they can do big, amazing things for you. And it's in your name we pray. And we say, Amen. Amen.
boys and girls, don't let your critics discourage you. Because they might not believe in you, but who believes in you? God. God believes in you and knows that you can do anything. Now, I know that you've been paying super close attention and you've been putting all that stuff up in your brain. So do you know what it's time for us to do now? It's time for us to drain your brain. It's time to play Brain Drain. So I need two boys and two girls who are paying super close attention throughout the entire service. Let's see who's it going to be. Come on up. Now I need two girls. Two girls. Come on up. All right. Come on up, everybody. It's time to explain the rules for Brain Drain. So I'm going to ask you all a question about today's service. And you've got to be the first team to buzz in and tell me the correct answer. But guess what? If you buzz in before I finish saying everything, the question will go to the other team and you won't be able to answer it. Do you guys understand? You have to wait until I'm finished to buzz in. And you can't touch your microphones. All right, are you guys ready? Okay, let's get started with question number one. What's up today? I'll stay away from critics. I won't let critics destroy my faith, or critics can't take away my faith. Boys. Uh, um, I won't let critics destroy my faith. He said, I won't let critics destroy my faith, and the answer is... I can see that. I won't let critics destroy my faith. Good job. Question number two. What do we call the people who are constantly trying to tell us that we can't do things? Bad people, discouragers, or critics? Critics. critics. They said critics. Is it critics? It's okay. Critics is exactly right. Good job. Question number three. When David said he would fight Goliath, what did his brothers do? They made fun of him, they let him fight, or they sent him home. Boys. Let him fight? They said that he said they let him fight. Is that correct? No, they made fun of him. I'm sorry, that was not correct. Let's move on to question number four. Who else told David he was too young to take on the giant? His parents? King Saul or his best friend? Boys. King Saul. He said King Saul. <laughs> Was it King Saul? <laughs> King. All right, question number five. True or false? Critics aren't ever a problem. True or false? Boys. Um, critics are a problem. False. Is it false? False and it's correct. Good job. Question number six. What kind of animals did David kill in order to save his father's sheep? Tigers, wolves, or lion and bear? Girls. Lion and bear. She said lion and bear. Is that correct? That is right. Good job. Okay, question number seven. According to our lesson today, don't let critics blank you. Discourage, harm, or tickle. Boys. Harm. He said harm. Is that correct? No, it was discourage. I'm sorry, boys. Question number eight. According to our lesson today, fight the giant, not the blank. Sinner, critics, or person? Boys. Critics. He said critics. Is that correct? That's exactly right. Good job. Question number nine. According to our lesson today, blank battles prepare you for big victories. No Big or small? Boys. Small. He said small. Is it small? Uh huh. Small is correct. Great job. Okay, question number 10. This is the final question. 
Are you guys ready? All right. Where was our power verse found? Galatians 6, 9, 2 Peter 4, 4, or Goliath 16, 11. Boys, you buzzed in too early, so this one's going to go to the girls. Girls, is it Galatians 6, 9, 2 Peter 4, 4, or Goliath 16, 8? Where was our power verse found? <gasps> what is it? 6, 9. She said Galatians 6. Yeah, give it up for the boys, everybody. Oh, yeah. Now, we have had an awesome time learning about how we can't let our critics discourage us, that we can't let them speak into our lives or bring us down. No, we have to trust in God, take the small victories, every small battle, and Remember that God has big plans for us. Now, next week, we are going to be continuing giant, and we're going to be learning all about how we can trust God to help us defeat those giants in our lives. So make sure you're here and you're watching as we defeat some amazing giants. We'll see you next week.